Lesson Plan Presentation for ED4461 Indigenous Futures. Today I will be critiquing and modifying an ABC education resource called Galunga the Green Tree Frog, written and illustrated by Wiridjuri Elder Auntie Gloria Whalen. The use of this text in a foundation classroom aligns with the Australian Curriculum Year Level Description, reporting a range of provider literature should include oral narrative traditions of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, as well as contemporary literature of these two cultural groups. The resource provides a video in which Auntie Gloria Whalen reads the story Galunga the Green Tree Frog, as sound effects are played appropriately. Galunga was a green tree frog who liked to live in the banana trees, which grew at the back of the house. It was shady and damp there. Main nouns are introduced using English words alongside their Wiradjuri translation. Frog is Galunga in Wiradjuri language, and tree is Madame in Wiradjuri language. This is a positive cultural attribute. Raman states Indigenous students, as minorities in schools dominated by white culture, must be supported to feel they belong through the acceptance of Aboriginal culture and language. ABC Education suggests students could write their own stories about something their grandparents may have taught them. However, more could be achieved with this resource, using the video as impetus for richer discussions focused on Indigenous ways of knowing, ways of being and ways of doing. Three foundation level content descriptions are specified from the Australian Curriculum English Learning Area, Language and Literature strands. No elaborations were listed, however some interpretations could be made. First, understanding English is one of many Australian languages could elaborate to recognising elements of an Aboriginal language, resulting in improved learning outcomes for Indigenous students. Second, sharing feelings and thoughts about events and characters could elaborate to make personal connections and discussing the author. Here, exploring ideas more deeply or exploring the author's heritage would move the activity beyond a superficial storytelling by an Indigenous elder to learning more valuable to Indigenous and non-Indigenous students. But it is here that Dr Tyson Yanka Porter suggests teachers are too afraid of being wrong or simply undervalue Indigenous knowledge, content to trivialise and marginalise its meaning. Finally, exploring the different contributions of words and images to meaning, thus emphasising the importance of each element. This could be explored through Yanka Porter's Eight Ways Framework by examining symbols and images and nonverbal storytelling. And while there is scope within these content descriptions to satisfy an English lesson utilising contemporary Indigenous literature, there is an opportunity and demand for a deeper engagement with the indigeneity of the text. The Australian Institute for Teaching and School Leadership outlined two focus areas of the Australian Professional Standards for Teachers, mandating the requirement to embed cultural knowledge and teaching strategies into the classroom. Therefore, I would incorporate an additional three content descriptions to a lesson sequence. Importantly, this would not be to add complexity or confusion. More so, drawing from the English literacy strand would describe the ways in which students would develop their understanding. Firstly, recognising texts are created by authors who tell stories and share experiences similar or different to our own, where Auntie Gloria Whalen's indigeneity as a storyteller may be explored. Listening to and responding orally to text and to the communication of others aligns with yarning circles, within which students would learn about culture through cultural methods, creating a deeper, more authentic learning experience. And using interaction skills including listening while others speak, using appropriate voice levels, articulation and body language, gestures and eye contact, describe effective group discussion skills including culturally appropriate behaviours and an opportunity to use home languages in context. Further, the cross-curriculum priority Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander histories and cultures aims to achieve two important goals in education. For Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders to identify with curriculum in a way that makes them feel valued and confident, and for all students to be involved in the reconciliation process and celebrate Indigenous culture. To enact this, Akara used a conceptual framework of overarching concepts that include three key ideas, people, culture and country place. There are a set of organising ideas for each key idea that reflects the essential knowledge, understandings and skills for the priority. 
Embedding these into the lesson would enhance and deepen Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander historical and cultural understanding for all students. I would incorporate the following organising ideas into my lesson plan. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities maintain a special connection to country place, emphasised by Auntie Gloria Whelan's connection to her people, the Wiradjuri from New South Wales. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have holistic belief systems, spiritually and intellectually connected to land, sea, sky and waterways. Auntie Gloria Whelan knew her heart was in the bush, the land and the animals. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island societies have many language groups. Wiradjuri language is one of many hundreds of Indigenous languages. Towns or local languages include Murrawari, Wekagamara and Wulgarukaba. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people's way of life is uniquely expressed through ways of being, knowing, thinking and doing, such as the way Auntie Gloria Whelan identifies using animal behaviour to predict a weather event. Based on the selection of content descriptions and perspectives, two learning outcomes are derived. Recognise that English is one of many languages spoken, including Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander languages, and participate in group discussion. Importantly, while many perspectives and elaborations are incorporated into this plan, not all elements will be assessed. It is assumed many skills are still developing for students. Based on Young Kapoor's Eight Ways Framework, I have outlined a week-long sequence using Galunga the Green Tree Frog. Formative level students require heavy scaffolding of new skills, therefore engaging in yarning circle discussions using a gradual release of responsibility across and through each of the five days will support this learning. Students will build Indigenous content knowledge through Indigenous cultural practices with progressive storyboard activity using symbols and images and Indigenous language, significant to land links and community, concluding with constructivist driven discussions about the author using prompting questions. The use of Eight Ways Framework will be evident by story sharing at the beginning of each lesson, symbols and images to recount the story sequence, community and land links using yarning circles in Indigenous language, and non-verbal communication to act out the story. To demonstrate, here are the Eight Ways concepts embedded into the plan across the week. Assessment of learning outcomes would occur as formative observations during yarning circles and literacy activities. I would collect anecdotal notes of behaviours such as engagement, participation and adherence to protocol. Targeted questioning would indicate understanding of Indigenous languages. Assessment considerations include explicitly informing students of learning outcomes, ensuring students are aware of what is expected. Acknowledging Indigenous students may avoid answering direct questions for fear of shame, therefore gathering observations discreetly. Understanding Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people are collective cultures and evaluation of individuals' work may be deemed inequitable. Assess students in their preferred composition. Feedback considerations. Teachers' feedback impacts directly on future learning. Perso and Haywood say good feedback is informative and constructive and should include affirmations, critiques and guidance. Discussing feedback with students and parents to create understanding is imperative. Some general strategies to promote community engagement. Accepting family, parent, carer can mean any community member. Holding meetings or yarns. Engaging in Indigenous culture. Welcoming family into the classroom. Demonstrating high expectations. Respectfully discussing cultural differences from an aspect of interest, not judgment. Assisting parents and carers to understand learning outcomes. A final suggestion. Connect with Indigenous members of the local community to explore the local Indigenous words for the nouns presented in the story. What a wonderful cultural connection that would achieve between local Indigenous and school communities. And remember, as Price implores, Teachers are the key. Teachers who are aware of the cultural and language backgrounds of their students and who value Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander lives.